Hello and welcome back to Love Spell. Last time I got unreasonably embarrassed. And just to clear this up, this was not really about what was happening in the game. Um, it was more that I had to make a choice right in that scene. I didn't expect that. But to be honest, I assumed they would have been interrupted either way. So whatever. Um, yeah, uh, I think we actually will have to expect more embarrassing scenes not sure if it will happen in this episode but they were kind of hinting at a night happening and i mean the title of this episode so yeah let's get right into it episode 7 amore mio my eyes slowly open as the setting sun's rays peek into my room waking me up my heart starts beating loudly in my chest when I notice Marcello's handsome sleeping face across from me. Between us, a sleeping Tito holds both of our hands tightly. We must have all dozed off. But Marcello... He, he looks so tired. All the stress must be catching up to him. I stare worryingly at Marcello's face as Tito nuzzles slightly into him. I can't help but stifle a small smile as I watch Tito's hair tickle Marcello's nose. They look like father and son napping together like this. How adorable! <laughs> little drool here. Cute. Suddenly, Marcello's eyes open and stare back into mine. My breath hitches in my chest and I find myself lost in his dark amber orbs. A smile plays on his face, his gaze flickers down to Tito and then back to me. For a few moments, all we do is stare at each other smiling. Suddenly, Tito mumbles between us as he squeezes our hands. Mama, Papa. Tito. Marcello's smile fades as he turns to Tito with sad, guilt-stricken eyes. He starts speaking in a low voice, but still loud enough for me to hear. I'm sorry, Tito. Marcello, it wasn't your fault. I hope you know that. It's on my shoulders now, Kay. I have to stop this, no matter what it takes. If it's war, it's war. Slowly, I release myself from Tito's grip and I walk over to Marcello to prevent him from leaving. I look up at him pleadingly, but he only looks away. Marcello, wait, please, I I just don't think more violence is the answer to this. Isn't there another way? Something just, just doesn't add up here. Why would the Black Lions do something like this? You said it yourself, you've been in mutual peace for years, so why? Why would they do all this now? Won't going to war with a group like the Red Dragons cost them greatly in the end? I agree with you, Kay. But at this point and after all this evidence we found, I'm afraid I can't put it off any longer. I can't keep letting my people get hurt just because I'm too afraid to act. No matter what it takes, I will put an end to this. And them. Marcello tries to leave again, but I block his path. I grab his hand. His eyes widen. Marcello, wait. Please listen to me. Meaningless bloodshed won't solve anything either. How can you just throw away the lives you vowed so vehemently to protect when you don't even know the full truth? 
A war will only create more broken children who will have to suffer like Tito. Tito stares in his sleep, turning over to his side. Marcello and I glance back at the sleeping figure before Marcello lets out a deep sigh. I'm sorry, princess. I'm all out of options and time here. At this point in the game, it's kill or be killed now. But no matter what happens, I promise I will keep you both safe. You have my word. He moves me out of the way before solemnly walking out of the room. <sighs> oh dear. Later that night. I sigh deeply as I lay down in my bed. I stare blankly at my ceiling as Philia waddles over to me. Master, please cheer up. I look over at the small penguin to see Philia place a small bag of frozen mozzarella sticks in front of me. I can't help but crack a small smile as I look up at the worried little penguin. Thank you, Philia. I know how much you love these. Please feel better, Master. It makes Philia sad when you're sad. My smile widens slightly as I pat the small penguin's head. Suddenly, a small knock on my door catches my attention. A few moments later, Tito peeks his head into my room. Tito? Is everything okay? Uh, um, yeah, I just... C can I sleep here? Sleep here? I, I, uh, it's not because I'm scared or anything, honest. I just, um, there was a, a bug in my room. Yeah, it was a huge spider and I... My eyes soften as I watch Tito struggle with his words. I slowly motion him over and wrap him in, in a tight hug as I shoot him a reassuring smile. After a few moments, Tito wraps his arms around me tightly. Yes, this bed is big enough for the both of us, Tito. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Thank you, Kay. I... I'm really happy. I have a friend like you. <laughs> a few hours later. <sighs> I let out another sigh for the umpteenth time in the last hour as I stare up at the ceiling. Eventually, I toss around before fixing my eyes on the dim light pouring into the room from outside. There's just no use. I'm not getting a wink of sleep tonight. I roll over to my side and I can't help but smile as I watch Tito cuddle up to Philia, who is sleeping soundly next to him. Watch it, punk. Hands off my cheese. Sticks. <laughs> After several moments, I stand up and walk towards my window. My thoughts linger to my cello as I stare at the night sky. Just as I'm about to walk away, he grabs me backwards and pulls me into his chest. I can feel his breath on my ear and another intense shiver runs down my spine. Tomorrow night, after the manor's lights are all out, come to my room. Let's finish what we started. I can't help but flush red as I remember Marcello's invitation from last night. You idiot. 
Just what are you thinking at a time like this? I let out another sigh as I stare at my door. The memory of Marcello's heartbroken expression as he looked at Tito also resurfaces and I bite my lip. There's such a big weight on his shoulders and he knows that better than anyone. He must feel so alone right now. What should I do? Go to him or go back to sleep? Of course we'll go to him. Come on. I bite my lip harder as a thought runs through my mind. I glance at my door as I nervously grab the hem of my shirt. Uh, what am I thinking? There's no way he'd be awake waiting for me. I should just go back to sleep. But I... A flash of Marcello's heartbroken face appears in my mind once again and I clutch my heart. But I... I want to help him. At my own realization, I can feel my heart beginning to beat faster and faster. When did this happen? When did I start thinking like this? When did I start feeling this way? No, who am I kidding? It doesn't matter. I can't lie to myself anymore. I want to see him. I need to see him. I glance over at Filia and Tito sleeping on my bed as I quickly and quietly sneak out of the room. Of course we are. Of course. I take a deep breath as I'm standing in front of the large dark door. Hesitant, I knock softly. After a few moments, there's nothing but silence. Ugh, what was I thinking? Of course he's asleep. I'm going back. But just as I'm about to sneak away, a low voice stops me in my tracks and causes a shiver to run down my spine. Come in. Slowly, I tiptoe into his room. Marcello turns around as I close the door, shooting me a tired smile. <laughs> Didn't think you'd actually show up, to be honest. As I examine at his handsome face, my heart sinks. Marcello. Papers are strewn all over his desk as notes, newspaper clippings and documents cover every corner of the room. Marcello stretches as he rubs his sore neck. He's been up working until this hour? I took your word seriously. Huh? I told Valentino to call off my previous order. You're right. I know better than anyone it's plain stupid to act on a situation you don't yet fully have a grasp on, especially when the stakes are this damn high. He wasn't happy, to say the least. Valentino? Yeah, we had a big fight. Probably the biggest since I took over as leader of the dragons. Valentino is like family to me, and he was my father's advisor before mine. I respect him more than anyone, but something's just telling me to follow my gut on this one. I walk over to Marcello as he's sitting on the edge of his desk with his brow, brow furrowed. So then, what now? Marcello crosses his arms before looking down. Tomorrow night I... Meet with the leader of the Black Lions. M meet? What if it's a trap? Meet? But Marcello, what if it's a trap? 
Hell, it might be, but at this point, I don't have much of a choice. Marcello shoots me a wry smile as he looks up in my direction with tired eyes. What? Don't tell me you're worried about me, Pinks. I thought I was mean old brood. Of course I'm worried about you. You, you big oaf. What if something were to happen to you? What about Tito? What about me? Marcello's eyes widen for a second before he shakes his head and walks over to me. He ruffles my hair as he grins. Don't worry, princess. I said I'd protect you, didn't I? Even if something does happen to me, I promise Valentino and the others will protect you too. No, it's not about that. No one can replace you, Marcello. Not to your men, not to Tito, N not to me. Okay. I can feel my face heat up as I look up at him with teary eyes. Please, just... Just promise me you'll be careful. I will. I promise. Gotta admit, I'm pretty happy I have someone this adorable looking after me. <laughs> I quickly wipe my forming tears as I look down. There you go again with the teasing. Who said I'm teasing, hmm? At this, I look up at him, eyes wide. He stares into my eyes intensely, and I can feel my breathing hitch. What? Marcello shoots me a smirk as he ruffles my hair. Just kidding. Now get out of here before I start getting serious. You hear? About that. I look into Marcello's face and I can tell he's holding something back. I peer down shyly before I open my mouth. Can I... stay here tonight? A few moments pass in silence. I feel Marcello move to stand directly in front of me. He reaches out a finger to lift my chin, forcing me to face him directly. An unknown expression plays on his face as he stares down at me intensely. Okay, I don't think you know what you're getting yourself into here. What if... I want to find out? Marcello eyes me seriously before he walks over to the door, locking it. My breathing hitches as he roughly grab, roughly, roughly, I'm sorry. <laughs> she roughly grabs my waist and closes the space between us in a second. He forcefully pulls my chin up to look at him again. A hungry, depraved expression dances on his face as he looks down at me, as if I were a meal and he was starving. I'm going to ask you one last time. Are you sure about this? Marcello's gaze is burning as I slowly bring my hands up to his chest. Yes. I... I don't want to leave. I want to be here. With you. Without barely a second's notice, Marcello crashes his lips onto mine. He kisses me hungrily, passionately, and almost bruisingly. I feel him pick me up with ease as I wrap my legs around his waist. He places me on his desk as he breaks away from me for a second. I'm not planning on letting you go tonight. He pulls me into another kiss and I can't help but feel my heart light up 
as I wrap my arms around his neck and tangle my hands in his hair. I can barely stifle a moan as he moves to bite down on my neck and makes quick work of my clothing. Everything is happening so fast, I can barely keep up. I can only watch as he sends the remainder of my clothes flying, leaving me clad in only my underwear. I notice he's barely undressed, and as I reach out to unbutton his shirt, he pins my hands above my head and climbs on top, sparing no seconds to waste. Marcello, wait! Wait, my ass. I've wanted to strip you naked since I first saw you. No way in hell am I stopping now. His hands travel all over me as he pushes me back onto the desk. He leaves burning kisses all over my neck as he moves his attention to my chest. I mew and struggle under him as just the touch of his hands and lips melts me into a puddle. I unconsciously gasp as his other hand slips under my panties. My face turns beet red as he stares up at me with a cocky expression. Mules become moans as we eventually make our way over to the bed. Marcello takes me in every way I could have imagined and just when I think he's done, he turns me over and does it again, faster and harder. The way he holds me and touches me sends my heart soaring, but it carries a sense of urgency to it, as if we're running out of time. But yet, even despite that, under his burning touch, I experience a level of pleasure and passion that I've never known in my entire life. As he kisses me, I can't help but cling to him and kiss back with all the feelings in my heart praying my actions get across what my words cannot. At one point, I grab him desperately as I melt his lips onto mine for a soft moment. We pull away, panting heavily, and he moves some stray strands of hair out of my face before gazing at me tenderly. I've never met a woman like you before, you know that? Strong, sassy, with a mouth like a gun, but a heart of gold. And beautiful, God. So damn beautiful. You're incredible, Kay. Let me prove it to you tonight. Marcello kisses me hungrily again as I wrap my arms around his neck. I break away breathlessly to stare up at him. You too. Marcello, I... <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Can you say it again, princess? Can't hear you over your moans. Idiot, D don't call me that right now. Why not? You're my princess now, got that? I can only respond in a loud yelp of pleasure as Marcello grins. <laughs> Gonna wake up this whole damn manner at this point. Oh well. As the night plays out, Marcello and I make love more times than I can remember. The feeling of his strong arms wrapped around my body and his flaming kisses are not ones that I will easily be able to forget in my life. Eventually, we drift off into a peaceful slumber, wrapped in each other's arms, and for the first time in my life, I feel I've finally found a place to call my home. Yep, that happened. Oh. My eyes flutter awake as the first rays of dawn slowly sleep into the dark room. I look over at the gorgeous man sleeping next to me and I can't help but smile at him lovingly. Marcello. I lean over and kiss his cheek quietly before trying to sneak out of bed. Suddenly, a hand grabs me and pulls me back under the covers. 
I giggle as I feel my cello spoon me in his arms. Don't go. Stay here. I have to get back before Tito wakes up. He came to my room last night because he was scared and I don't want him to wake up alone. Marcello groans, but he lets me go. I put my clothes, clothes back on before I lean over and kiss him on the lips again. Marcello looks at me sleepily as he grabs my hand. Get some rest, okay? It's still early. You have a big day ahead of you. But just know, I really do believe in you, Marcello. You're a wonderful person and an even greater leader. And no matter what happens, I promise, you can always count on my support, okay? I slowly let go of his hand before heading towards the entrance of the room. Just as I'm about to leave, Marcello's voice stops me. Hey, wait. I turn around at the door as I stare at Marcello's sleepy yet serious expression. Y yes? Ti amo. As I make my way down the silent halls, I can feel my heart beating rapidly in my chest. Ti amo. I wonder what that... Oh, come on. I wonder what that means. I'll have to look it up when I get back to my room. Uh... Anyone who doesn't know, go look it up. Now. I can't help but smile as butterflies flood my stomach. All I can think of is my cello as my heart soars, remembering our passionate night together. As I reach my door, I notice it's slightly open. Tito, are you awake? Hmm? My eyes widen as a man quickly grabs me and covers my mouth. He puts a white cloth with a weird smell under my, over my nose. I attempt to fight back, but it's no use. My vision is already going hazy. With the last of my energy, I glance around to find Tito, only to spot another man in a black suit holding him and covering his mouth as well. Tito frantically struggles as he looks, locks eyes with me. Tito! Suddenly, my vision completely darkens and I lose consciousness. Oh dear, oh dear. What a cliffhanger! <sighs> okay, again, not too much to say about that. What would I say about that? Hmm. Yeah, we'll just see what happens after this really mean cliffhanger next time. Bye-bye.